Welcome to another episode of Life and Whiskey. As always, I'm Jordan, and today we are going to look at not Monkey Shoulder, because we've already done that, but uh, this is my Scotch Infinity bottle. I decided to put it in the Monkey Shoulder bottle, because I kind of like, A, I really like Monkey Shoulder, B, there's a fair bit of Monkey Shoulder in this Infinity bottle, and C, I kind of like the look of these little fiddly bits, as we'll say on there. I did have it in this bottle, um, which is just kind of a really nice looking bottle. It's from Glacier Distilling um, up in um, Montana when we used to live up in Whitefish. Uh, this distillery was just down the road. Um, but, you know, that bottle is pretty darn fancy and nice. But it says North Fork. It's their rye whiskey, which was really good. Um, and so it just didn't seem right to put a Scotch Infinity bottle into a rye bottle. So, uh, I dumped it out, put it into there, uh, although there's a little bit in there still, so we might have to see if we can get it out there. There we go. Um, and we'll save this, maybe we'll put this as a, a second rye Infinity bottle now that we just did a couple more videos on rye. Um, although the Redemption bottle's still quite nice as well. Um, but here we go. So in here, I put uh, a little bit of all the scotches that I currently own. So I got Monkey Shoulder, Scoresby, which was in my budget series, and I really liked that one. Um, I got some Dewar's White Label, uh, some of the, the Dow Winnie, which was the... House of Stark Game of Thrones edition uh, for the Dalwini. Uh, I got some Clan McGregor, which was also in the budget series, and that one brought a little more of the barrel impact into it. Uh, and then some John Barr, um, which is pretty similar to a Johnny Walker, in my opinion. Um, so all those bottles, a little bit in here of each to create a Scotch Infinity Bottle. Uh, I've already done the Rye Infinity Bottle and the Urban Infinity Bottle. And for those of you who this is your first episode or you're not aware of what an Infinity Bottle is, oftentimes the tradition is to take the neck pour, which is the first amount of whiskey in a bottle, or... You know, when you crack open that bottle and you drink it down to the very end and there's not quite enough for a full pour in there, you just take that last little bit, dump it into a bottle, and you keep blending together multiple bottles of whiskey um, into a single bottle, let them meld, and you create something interesting that's constantly changing over time as you put more and more and different um, varieties into that same bottle. That's the infinity part of the infinity bottle is you just keep it going by adding to it constantly. A um, couple of words of caution if you do that. Uh, if you put anything super outside of the realm or that has a very dominating flavor, chances are that's going to take over your flavor profile. So if it's something you don't particularly like, either put a small amount in or avoid it altogether. Um, like for scotch, you know, say I had Ardbeg or some other really heavy peated smoky scotch, uh, I probably would not put that in here since this particular blend does not have a lot of smoke to it. It's more of a highland or a, you know, kind of that sweet butterscotchy type flavor profile um, with just a hint of smoke in there. Um, but that's not to say you can't do that. I mean, you're obviously free to do whatever the heck you want. Like, I have mine separated out into rye, bourbon, and scotch. Also, you don't have to do that. You can blend across the different varieties. There's no reason or why you can't do something. I just thought as a starting point, it would be kind of nice to do that. So... Um, to keep them separated. So that's what I did here. So uh, I read off what's in here. Let's uh, nose this and see what we got. So up front, you got uh, heavy butterscotch. It has a lot of the monkey shoulder in it, and it has a lot of that monkey shoulder and Dalwini impact in here. Um, where it's just a butter, a creamy butterscotch, uh, some maltiness, uh, some barrel, 
you know, I always say scotch smells like scotch, um, which I've come to learn is typically that malt note in there. It's just a hint of that, not a lot. Um, just a clean white oak smell. Just a hint of smoke, some peat in there. But mostly that creamy butterscotch smell. And malt. <clears throat> The flavor profile, I would say, is better than any of those scotches I listed off individually. It's sweet, it's creamy, it's butterscotch up front. It moves into a vanilla and an oak tannin with a hint of dryness. It finishes with a very nice and enjoyable light peat, a camp's fire smoke um, to it. A little barrel char in there that's underlain with a nice creamy sweetness to finish it off. So that creamy sweetness is start to finish. Um, it has a dry finish on the end with that, that peat smoke. Um, like dry again, not being dry flavor, but dry, you know, like dry versus sweet as in wine. It's dry as it dries out your mouth. It dries out your tongue. It's not this oily, clingy, creamy uh, thing that persists. It's just, um, it's, it's just a good blend, man. Uh, yeah, if you're not already doing this with your scotch, by all means, you should definitely do that. Um, and like I said, I just took and dumped parts of everything in here. I didn't measure. I know there's more. There's probably this much, um, monkey shoulder in there. So, like, if we were to look at this bottle, there's probably that much monkey shoulder and that much Scoresby, you know? For that first third and then the other whiskeys make up the rest of that um that clan mcgregor i kept in there for that oakiness and it seems like the best qualities of all the scotches that i listed came through in this blend now that's not always going to be the case in an infinity bottle but in this particular case it worked out really really well and this is definitely better than the parts in their individual parts like it's this is a really good whiskey And that smokiness. Now, none of those those scotches that I mentioned are known for their peaty smokiness. Um, the John Barr has a little bit, and the Clan McGregor has a little bit. But the fact that they all kind of have just enough that it comes through in this whiskey is pretty awesome. So, I'll have that. So, today, as my topic of conversation, uh, this says pipe and tobacco. It's my um, Maxwell House can. <clears throat> So, during elk hunting season this year, I wanted to try something new. So what I did was I carved out of a chunk of oak that I was using um, for aging whiskey. But uh, out of a chunk of white oak from my hunting partner's farm, I took out of the heartwood um, a chunk and I carved out this pipe. Now, it, you know, it just has a little stub here. Um, interesting enough, this little bit was enough that when I was smoking it, the, the smoke was cool enough that it was actually enjoyable. It never got too hot, which was awesome. That was kind of a fear of mine. Um, and even though there's just this little nub on there, um, I may, just because it'd be kind of fun, um, hone that down to a knob and then make a long wizard pipe out of it. So I might make a big long chunk that fits on there still undecided on that because this works pretty good the bowl on this is very large and deep um but if i fully pack it it smokes for about about a half hour maybe an hour depending on if i keep it going or if i let it go out and then relight it a couple of times um still learning how to pack a pipe properly to keep it going um but it was pretty awesome uh first time on 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 smoking a pipe ever and um part of the reason for wanting to switch to a pipe was uh a regular standard size cigar um just was proving too much too often uh like if i was fishing so i normally smoke a cigar if i'm if i'm fly fishing or at the end of the day on the tailgate after bird hunting with my hunting partner and we've cleaned all the birds 
Uh, we sit there, have a beer or a whiskey and a cigar, and just kind of reminisce as the sun sets or whatever. Um, but oftentimes that cigar is about 20 minutes too long. You know, it goes from enjoyable to work. And I thought, well, if I have a pipe, uh, you know, I can smoke it when I want to smoke it, and I can let it go out, or I can only pack a little bit in there and not have to pack the whole thing full, just to smoke a little bit, um, and so that it stays in that enjoyable zone and it doesn't cross the threshold into work, and I don't have to feel guilty about wasting a cigar. Now, you know, I don't smoke fancy cigars, so most of them are only a dollar, two dollars, three dollars at the most per stick. But it's I'm a tight ass if anybody knows me. So like a cigar that's this big, if I waste that much of a cigar, I feel pretty much like why did I even light this up if I was going to waste it? And so that had me moving into a lot of the Cigarello type cigars. So um, you know, again, cheap stuff. I always like the the Swisher Sweet Cigarellos, um, the Backwoods, the 1882s, um, stuff that sometimes has a little bit of flavor with it or or whatever. Um, but you know, something like that only takes 10 minutes, 15 minutes to smoke, which is like the perfect time, especially when you're out fly fishing or something like that. You know, you take a midday break, you sit out on the on the shore there, have a beer, uh, smoke a cigar really quick, get back to fly fishing, right? And then you're not wasting a giant cigar. Um, but then that got me thinking, well, you know, pipes. Pipes are one of those things that are not as controversial. Cigars are not as controversial either, but it's not like cigarette smoke where everybody hates the smell of it. Um, pipes, most of the tobaccos you can get smell really, really nice to most people, so they're not as offended if you're smoking one. Um, and so there's that along with the ability to control the the amount of time that I have to invest in it. So if I load this sucker up, you know, I can sit there for an hour and, and have fun and, and sit and talk with people and smoke my pipe. Or, you know, if you let it go out, you relight it a couple times, whatever. Um, that mixed with the different varieties of tobacco that you can get also made it really kind of interesting. And of course, because this is a whiskey channel, I had gotten the bourbon flavor and the whiskey flavor. Now, I will say both tobaccos are very nice tobaccos. However, neither of them have any identifiable characteristic as bourbon and or whiskey. I got none of that out of it. It was just more or less regular tobacco flavor, um, which is fine. And the nice thing about cigars and pipe tobacco is they are not treated with all those nasty chemicals that cigarettes have. Not saying that smoking it's any healthier for you, really, um, because at the end of the day you're smoking, um, but you tend not to inhale like you do with cigarettes, and cigarettes are treated with, you know, like formaldehyde and all those weird chemicals, and the point of that is to get the nicotine into your system quicker, whereas um, this is literally just tobacco that's been soaked in whiskey and then dried. Um, same with the bourbon, it's just tobacco soaked with, you know, dried, uh, soaked in bourbon and then dried again um, to get it to the right level. So there's not this treatment with it that um, is as toxic or nasty as cigarette smoke. Not justifying it at all, but at least there's that. Um, so that the, all those reasons combined are why I switched to a pipe. And I thought, okay, it'd be kind of cool to, to, to make a pipe. Um, not very difficult to do. Uh, you can always get the little plastic pieces that have the little mouthpiece on them and stuff if you want. Um, this thing draws really nice. It just all the way around is, is a nice little pipe. And I think I might start making these and selling these on like Etsy or something like that. Um, you know, just, it's a project I can do from the house. It, it didn't take me a ton of time, maybe a half hour to really make this. Um, and that's about the right amount of time investment. Ah, that's not true. It probably took an hour, maybe an hour and a half even to make this, which is a, a, a reasonable amount of time. You know, I'm going to be playing Mr. Mom here as my wife goes back to work pretty soon. Uh, so I got to have a, a income source, something I can do from the house. Um, and so I can make these pipes, I can tie some flies, I think I'm going to start tying flies that are uh, specific to the area I live in, um, 
and some stuff like that that I'm going to start selling online and see if I can't get a little bit of income um, while at home watching the kid. And so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, just kind of touch on that because, uh, you know, whiskey and cigars or whiskey and pipes, they go together quite well. Uh, I got this antelope hunt coming up. Um, my buddy that's coming in from Minnesota, he's an, uh, I'll say an aficionado, uh, of both whiskey and, um, cigars, uh, and he was with me in camp that first week for elk season, um, and that was pretty awesome. Us boys, man, we sat around, we, uh, another guy had brought his pipe, which is kind of hilarious, uh, that he even had that. He also brought some scotch and some Hennessy, and, um... And I brought, you know, a couple different varieties of whiskey for everybody to share. And uh, and my buddy brought some cigars and he brought some scotch as well. And we just had ourselves a man's week of fun. Um, and it was it was kind of entertaining that all of us guys sat around and uh, we're kind of all at various stages of life. Me and another guy, uh, his daughter just turned a year this year. Another buddy of mine, he has a three-year-old, and the other guy has three daughters that are uh, like three, five, and eleven, or some something like that. You know, where there's a pretty good spread. Two of them are pretty close, and then a, a spread between between the other two. And so, like, it was just entertaining as a new father sitting there talking to him about the different trials and tribulations that you have to go through as a father and then kind of getting into different perspective and that uh, most of the guys had girls one buddy has a has a son uh and i have a son and so like getting that perspective on things and then uh still being able to to you know get away from the wife um you know the, the story of the 30 point buck if you're from wisconsin or or the midwest there you might be familiar with that song Kind of that sort of mentality while still like seeing the whole father mentality uh, while we still got to enjoy our cigars and our whiskey and our hunting and do it um, without the ladies around. It was it was something I, I really enjoyed it. and I hope they did, too. So if they do watch this at all, hope you guys enjoyed it and had some fun along the way, because I sure did. Um, try making a pipe sometime. If not, hopefully I'll have some for sale here. Um uh, I think they're they're pretty enjoyable and there's a lot of good benefits to them. Um, if you're going to smoke something, there's a benefit to that versus a cigar or something else. Um, but by all means, you know, I partake in all and I hope you guys, whatever you do, you enjoy it while you do it. Because if not, there's no reason to to start uh, just start doing it just for the sake of doing it. But try an infinity bottle, try a scotch infinity bottle. This one happens to be pretty awesome. Once again. It's got a little bit of Monkey Shoulder, Scoresby, Dewar's White Label, Dal Winnie, uh, Clan McGregor, and John Barr in it as far as whiskeys go, which all of those I've done reviews of on this channel. So feel free to check those out as well if you want to get an idea of what the flavor profiles are of those particular scotches. As always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe this channel or dislike it and subscribe. As long as you subscribe, that'd be awesome. Uh, share this video with as many people as you think uh, would enjoy it um, as I am trying to build this channel still starting to get things going a little bit better here um, but I'm no longer on Facebook so I don't have a means to share this channel uh, through Facebook or and I've never been on Twitter which those two are some of the better ways to do it so if you are on any of those social media uh, platforms please feel free to share this stuff uh, I am on Minds.com. I'm looking to get on BitChute, and um, and for now, we're still on YouTube. So um, thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day, and we will catch you in the next video.